car, just so much grip. It's like. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to be taking some drag racers drifting. This is pretty exciting for me because I've been watching the street racing channel for literally years now. And uh, we're gonna be giving them their first drift experience. So we have a private day set up at OSW for Saturday and the start of sick week is at OSW on Sunday. So the, the timing and location, everything worked out perfect. The stars aligned to where they're able to come to the track and try out some drifting. So we're gonna take them for some laps in the vet, some high speed oval full throttle laps. I'm really excited to, to give them their first drift ride along in a rowdy car like this on a rowdy track. But more than that, we're also going to be trying to teach them how to drift with the E36. It's kind of the perfect beginner's car. It doesn't have a crazy amount of power. It drives really well. It's, it's easy to drive. So we're going to see how quickly a drag racer can pick up on drifting. I think them being no prep racers will help because they're kind of used to the car, you know, having wheel speed and the car stepping out. So regardless, I'm very excited about this. I'm glad that the stars aligned and, and things worked out to where they're able to come out. Um, so. That being said, since we are going to be driving this car for the first time in a few months, we got to do some maintenance, you know. Doesn't matter how strong your engine is or how good your setup is, if you don't do your maintenance, we, we could blow this thing up in an instant with the car gripped up around the OSW oval. It's a lot of demand. So that being said, I'm going to quit jibber jabbering. We're going to get our prep work done and then we're going to head to the track. So we got to work on prepping this thing after it's a long hiatus of sitting around and doing a whole bunch of nothing. It's been over four months since I've driven this car, aside from, you know, backing out of the shop a time or two. So the biggest thing we need to make sure is 100% dialed is the fuel system and particularly the injector. So since this car is on ethanol, ethanol sits, it collects moisture, it gums up, it, it can create all sorts of problems. You're generally not supposed to let them sit, but a lot of times when you park the car, you don't necessarily realize that it's gonna be sitting for four months, which is kind of the case here. So I wanted to pull out all 16 injectors. Now we're not using all 16, it's just this, this manifold came set up for dual injectors. So we have them in there as backups more or less, but we need to make sure that we have eight working injectors because if you have one injector clog up, it can melt down a piston and tear your engine up, no matter how built your engine is. So even though, we're running relatively low stress on this engine for what it's built for. It still could go very wrong very quickly if we don't stay on top of this stuff. So fortunately, I have this cheap Amazon uh, injector cleaner and tester. So far, it seems to be working pretty well. It gives us a good idea of how matched they are and allows us to clean them. So we cleaned all 16, went through, found the best match set of eight, and then got ready to reinstall those in the car. So. We dropped the car down, Josue had done a nut and bolt check, definitely another very important thing to do anytime you're gonna go drifting on a, a relatively dangerous track like the OSW Oval. And then I got to work on swapping any injector O-rings that needed to be replaced and lubricating them up. That's another big thing. You've gotta lube up your O-rings before you put them in or you will tear them. And we're swapping out ones that were torn because they can cause leaks and cause problems. So after that was done, I went ahead and swapped the fuel filter. We have this Dietchworks spin on fuel filter setup, which is amazing compared to taking apart and cleaning a filter and the fuel system is done. All right, injectors are cleaned and reinstalled, fresh O-rings where needed. You can see we had a couple of the tears. Always something to keep an eye on. You know, one injector O-ring can set your whole car on fire. So let's check for leaks and then we'll do the plugs. So after verifying that we did not have any leaks, we could go ahead and cross the fuel system off the checklist and move on to the spark plugs. Now, this is kind of funny. This is something I definitely overlook. The only reason I thought to do it is because a friend of mine, Jonathan Hurst, he runs a turbo LS setup in FD. And he was asking me how I liked this engine size with this turbo setup, and then how I liked the way I built my headers. You know, how was it with changing plugs? And when I built these headers, I did build them around making sure that we could get the plugs out and we could change them easily. But I realized that I don't know that we've ever changed the plugs in this car. So <laughs> thought now was as good a time as any. Well, we got everything that we had planned to get done done on this thing to get it ready to go after its brief hiatus. It needs uh, it needs some good driving under its belt. Cars don't like sitting. So that being said, it's time to get this thing ready. So 
I managed to fit the 18s off the F80 on it, which is good because it had 17s on it and I don't have 17s on anything else. So I didn't have any 17s and I didn't think to order them. So that would have been rough, but luckily the F80 wheels fit and we've got a bunch of these scrub Nitto NT555 G2s. We're covered as far as tires are concerned, which is good. The last thing I need to tackle as far as I know on this thing is to helicoil coil this uh, shock bolt here. So someone had gone in here and put this big eccentric bolt with a stack of washers in there to try to make something work, but it didn't really tighten down. So we need to drill it out, helicoil coil it and get a proper bolt in there so the shock doesn't fall off. <laughs> So I started working on helicoiling this thing and of course the uh, tap wrench didn't fit. That's pretty standard. I normally drill tap things. I just use the drill, but this being such a big tap into cast iron, it was easier to do it by hand. So I got the ratchet out and made something work. Man, that tap, nice. Some of my better tap work. Helic oil in. Uh, now we just need to measure for our bolt length. So we got 20 mil in depth. So 55 mil, so 50 mil would probably be perfect. Hopefully we have that. So M12, 50 mil. Having a good selection of hardware goes a long way to uh, keeping projects on track. We had the exact size bolt that we needed. So once the heel coiling was done, I went ahead and put a fresh set of plugs in this thing. It was a turbo car, so it still had cold turbo car plugs in it. And I wanted to get those changed out just to make sure this thing is as dialed as possible for a thrash car like this. This isn't a car that's ever really dialed, but you know, try to get it as dialed as we can for this. So after getting everything loaded up, we headed to the track in the morning, and before the Street Racing Channel crew got there, I wanted to go ahead and just do a couple laps. I haven't driven the car in a while, so I'm rusty, and the car is rusty. The car has not been driven in at least four months, so it needs a good shakedown. So here's a pedal cam of the first lap when the car actually wanted to work, before it decided it didn't. As I was cruising through the pits to go back to grid, I just started noticing that the car was not running right. It was way down on power, it was hiccuping, it was backfiring every time I let off the gas. So I pulled back into our pits and started trying to diagnose what was going on here. But once I got back to the pits, it magically started working fine again. So I decided to take it out for another test lap and just see where we were at. And 
The car ran fine the whole lap, felt good, made plenty of power, nothing, nothing even slightly off. The only thing that we're dealing with is that the dash doesn't want to turn on, which is odd, but other than that, fine, until I pulled off track and the problem came right back. So after doing some diag through the data logs and looking at the live data, I realized that we were down an entire bank. Cylinders two, four, six, and eight had basically no exhaust gas temperature at all. Now fortunately we have individual exhaust gas temperature sensors to see that, but basically our problem is narrowed down to we're dropping a whole bank. So before we dig into it while it's hot, we figured we would let it sit, let it cool off, and I'd take Billy for some laps in the E36 before he takes it out himself for his first tries at drifting. He's never been in a drift car at all, so I wanted to show him kind of the gist of what needs to be done to drift a car around a track and uh, give him a little bit of a passenger lap before throwing him to the wolves to go try it himself. So it's funny jumping back and forth between these two cars because they could not be more opposite. This thing is so slow, but after I made sure it worked after all our little changes, it was time for Billy to be the first one to hop in, take the reins, and see what he can do in a drift car. Already in the driver's seat, I see. It's it's a it's a quick hitch. It's like once you sit in there, it's like no, I gotta try. Yeah. Oh. So Billy kept turning laps and uh, it was really cool to see it start to click. One of the things he did that I appreciated that a lot of, I would say, beginner drifters don't do is when he would start to lose it, instead of trying to save it over and over again and just digging himself into a deeper hole, he would stop drifting, collect himself, and then start again. And that is so much better of a way to do it because otherwise you're not really learning much. You're just kind of, it's just chaos mode. So it was cool to see it start to click. You know, I gave him just kind of minimal input when I took him for those laps and before he took the car out. And I thought, you know what? He'll learn this on his own as he goes and it'll stick better than me just trying to tell him what he needs to do. And you could see as the laps went on how he would start to, how it started to click what each input did. So after Billy had finished driving, me and Josue went ahead and fixed the vet. It was, of course, as it always is, a silly little issue. 
it was a coil pack extension harness that had failed. So we swapped that out and the car ran perfect. So we were ready to start taking people for ride-alongs. Now the first person up is Tommy. Of course my in-car camera, my second one didn't work for this run, but I'm really genuinely excited to see everyone's different reactions to riding in a drift car at all, but you know, a drift car like this, a rowdy car uh, that's hooked up with a bunch of grip. It's, uh, it's a special feeling to take people who've never been in a drift car for their first ride along. So of course the battery died on my second in-car camera for Tommy's first lap, but this is basically him saying he was really surprised at how much grip the car had and how much forward drive it has when you get on throttle. You know, there's kind of a misconception in drifting that we don't have any grip, but we make these cars go as fast as we can. <laughs> You can't hear his words, but you can definitely see his smile even through the helmet, which is uh, it's so cool. I've been doing it since I 
Yeah, they're fun. I mean, it's a lot of fun. You can do it pretty cheap. With like a basic seat time car.
pour gas and it just drops. That's fine. I don't know. That's like, hey, that's my biggest thing. I know how people, like, they get close and they want to come out of the gas, but you need to give it more gas so it drives away from it. I just do one, maybe if I'm lucky, two laps. I don't know. Don't rush, man. You okay. can take as long as you want. Man. Sweet. Thank you. I appreciate it. Did I get the first and the last ride. Don't say last. Another run. Another run. Another. Never say last you one. The first and another. <laughs> I learned that from BMX, and this kid rode with me for the first time. This is like 10 years ago. He was like, I was like, this is my last run. And he was like, bro, you know you shouldn't say that. And I was like, no, it's fine. And I crashed. Oh. So ever since then, I never say last one.
touch it hard enough, it'll just suck you in. You right. can't get off of it because it's curves, you know? So it's like, but it's fun because you can really get, you can floor it. Whereas out there, you're just like, eh. different than that <laughs> yes i mean really? especially that other car those banks those banks and this car are just so much grip it's like <laughs> that's awesome dude oh that was fun i'm so glad you got to ride along Fuck, man now i'm gonna have to have one all right how was your first drift experience it's amazing dude that was unlike anything i've ever experienced before i'm uh, so glad i didn't expect there to be that much grip Honestly, just like the more you roast the tires, the harder it wanted to hook. And you're a great driver too. Oh, right? thank you. I appreciate it. That was wild. That was up there with like a war in the woods experience for me. Being my first time in a car like that, that was. I'm so badass. glad. I'm so glad we got to do the oval too, because like that's the whole next level, you know. It's way like, different than out there. That's yeah, because it needs to be on a fast track. Right. So I'm glad. I'm glad you guys came. Thank you. Thank it was you, good man. seeing you. Appreciate it. All right, well, we made it back home with the vet. I am so glad we figured out what that problem was. That was driving me nuts. I was like, of course, the one time I've got all these people that I plan to give ride-alongs to, and I'm really excited about giving ride-alongs to, the car has an issue when it never gives us trouble. When we were packing up to leave, I grabbed just the little hand tool kit that I bring in the F80, because I was like, we never have to work on the car, and all the other tools are in the bus. You know, we haven't transferred things over to the new trailer. And I, I didn't speak it into existence, but I thought it. I thought, we never have to work on the vet anyway. We don't need all these tools. And uh, of course, the one time we needed them. But it was a simple, simple coil pack. Uh, I have it right over here. I think I tossed it in one of these bags. This guy is what caused us all that grief. This guy right here. A snake. This thing was an afterthought. We put it in after for the serviceability. Junk. So anyway, at least we got it sorted, but spending that time trying to figure it out kind of threw a wrench in all the plans for the day. <laughs> you know, we were just kind of behind. So it was one of those things. By the time I was done giving everyone ride-alongs, there wasn't really any time for anyone else to drive the E36 like we had planned. So we'll have to do another trip. You know, hopefully they, they come down again and we can do a day where, you know, everyone just turns laps in the car and gets to learn and experience it. Uh, Raldo and Jose did get to drive it though yeah. at the very end. Got some E36 action. I had to force him. I was like, go take the car. 
I'm glad. It's fun. Thanks for yeah. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I was like, we got 30 minutes left. Take the dang thing yeah. out. So that was good. We hung out for a while to help with fixing Bill's car. Or not help, but, you know, just moral support. And get that to where they had some rotten luck. But it was a great time meeting them. I'd never been on the other side of it where, like, I watch them regularly, so I feel like I know them. And then meeting them. I hear people say that to me or that I'm very... I'm the same person that I am in videos, and to, to experience that was interesting. So it was really cool. Had a good time hanging out with them. Hopefully we'll do some more stuff in the future once we get this thing done, uh, or maybe some more drifting. I don't know. They all seem to uh, seem to enjoy it. So I'm going to end it here. It's already probably a long video. So I want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I sure hope to see you next time. Goodbye.